Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you how you can make your own golf game in Unity. So without further ado, let's get started. So firstly, we're going to draw the game art for our game. And for this, I'm going to use the program Inkscape 2.0. So we're going to have to draw a golf ball, a background, a hole, and some obstacles like walls. So once you open Inkscape, click on the new document button and get ready to start drawing. Alright, so now I'm going to start drawing these things, and by the way, while you're making them yourself, you can add your own little twists just to make it fit more to your needs. Alright, and so when you're done drawing, make sure to export all your drawings to either your downloads, your desktop folder, anything works, and then we're going to go to the actual game. Alright, and so now that all the drawings are done, I'm going to open up Unity Hub and create a new 2D project. I'm going to call it Mini Golf Game. Make sure that your game is 2D and not 3D, by the way. And so now that we've made the project, let's open it up in the Unity Editor. Okay, so now that I have my new Unity project opened, I'm going to import new assets from the Edit, edit button in the top left. I'm going to import all the three assets that we just made, the background, the ball, and the wall. And now that that's in my scene, it's supposed to be in the project library, as you can see right here. And then I'm going to put them into my hierarchy. That way we're going to see them. And now as you can see, all the objects are in the game. Now I'm just going to rename them and resize them accordingly. I'm going to name the wall obstacle one, by the way, because in the future, we can have as many walls as we want. We're not just going to be limited to the one wall we drew. Alright, so now I've been playing around with the objects in the scene a little bit, and now it's starting to look more like a real mini golf game. And now what I did was I added another wall. So we have two obstacles making it a little more difficult, a little less simple. And so when you duplicate the wall, it's going to spawn right on top of the original wall. So now what I'm doing is I'm just changing it to make it look more like a real mini golf game. And now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a box collider 2D object like what I have here, a box collider 2D component on each wall. And basically what this does is it's kind of like a border. So whenever the ball hits the box collider, it's actually going to bounce off. And so I'm, when I'm making the box slider, I'm going to try and make it as specific as I can. So as you can see, I'm zooming in and trying to make it go right around the wall so that there's no room for air. And so what we also have to do is we have to add these colliders to the ball and around the green. This will ensure that the ball doesn't go through objects and that the ball doesn't go like across the walls at the end all right and so as you can see i'm adding a circle collider 2d to the ball since obviously the ball is a circle i'm uh, messing around so that it goes perfectly on it specifically around the ball and now i'm going to do the exact same thing for each wall and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add four empty objects under the uh green because you can't add multiple box sliders on one object so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add four objects one called top wall one called left wall one called right wall and one called bottom wall of course i'm going to add box sliders to each of those and as you can see they cover each side of the green so that the ball can't go through the wall and so if you follow along with me you'll be good to go with our next step soon all right while you are putting the box slider 2d on each side of the wall make sure to make it a box slider 2d and not just the regular box slider because obviously this is a 2d game uh, it's not going to work if you put the normal box slider, and that's something easily that a lot of people can slip up on. So yeah, make sure to watch out for that. And just to clarify, when I say wall at the end, I mean like the edges of the green, just so that the ball doesn't go off screen. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the component rigid body 2D to the green ball object. And then we're going to add a constraint on it by clicking on the constraint button. We're going to say freeze rotation Z. What we're also going to do is we're going to add the line render component on it. Uh, as you can see, I'm just searching it up. And this is going to illustrate the effect of us trying to move the ball. And now finally, we're going to add the golf ball controller script. This is how we're going to code it. 
You should see an empty script. But now let's start coding it. So in the beginning, we're going to define all these variables. The ball power, the rigid body, the min power, max power vectors, the line, the camera, the ball force, the start point, and the end point. So now in the awake function, we're going to we're gonna call the line variable and we're going to say line equals get component line render. So basically, this is just going to find the line render in the scene. Next, we're going to go void start and we're going to define the camera as well. It's going to help the game find out where the camera actually is. Now let's move on to the bulk of the script and update. So in the first part, we're just going to make the gravity scale zero. RB.gravity scale zero. Because we don't want gravity in a 2D game. Next, we're going to do if input.get mouse button zero. And basically what that does is whenever we click on the mouse, it calls the if function. And then we're going to quickly note down the start point. And we're going to make it Z15. We're going to do the same thing while you're holding down the mouse button. And that's going to be the current point. And we're going to note down the current point and its position as well. And then we're going to call the drawline function. Calling the drawline function in this if statement is going to cause a little bit of an error at first. But we're going to fix that soon. Now down in our code, we're going to do if input.getMouseButton up. Basically, this calls the if statement whenever you lift your finger out the, off the mouse pad. So then we're going to find out where the mouse is at that point, And we're going to call it endpoint. So now onto ball force. This is kind of the direction of where the ball should go. And it's a vector 2. We're going to start off by clamping start position. Uh, for x and y minus their respective end positions and that's going to help us find our direction now with our direction and power in mind we can do rb.add force ball force times ball power force mode 2d input and then at the end we're going to call the function endline which is also going to cause a little bit of a problem we're going to fix that shortly now fixing the first problem uh draw line we're just going to make the function draw line with two conditions start point and end point. You're going to notice that instead of the normal start point, I added as E after start and E after end. Basically, that's just to help the game not confuse this start point with the actual variable start point and same with end point. But you can just do something like start point one instead of start E point. This draw line function is just going to draw how the ball is moving. So in the beginning, we're going to do line dot position count equals two. We're going to make a list for all points, and in that list, we're going to put the start point and the end point. And then we're just going to do line dot set positions, all points. And then now to the end line function, void end line, we're just going to say line dot position count equals zero. Now let's go to Unity, and we're going to assign the necessary values. So basically, we're going to go to the golf ball controller component in the green ball, in the green ball game object. Now let's go to Unity and we're going to assign the necessary values. So basically, we're going to go to the golf ball controller component in the green ball in the green ball game object. We're going to firstly make the ball power equals 10. And as for the rigid body, we're just going to put the green ball component and we're just going to like drag that into the RB place. Basically, Unity is going to find the rigid body from the game object and put that in its necessary spot. For min power for both x and y, make that minus 5. And for max power for both x and y, also make that 5. Now, for the line, we're just going to drag and drop the line render into that. And now let's try this out. It's working like a charm. But there's one thing that you might notice. Basically, when the ball hits a wall or an obstacle, it doesn't bounce back like it would in real life. And so now we're going to fix that. So what I did to fix the ball not bouncing off the other structures is basically rid of physics material 2D. I called it bounce as you can see here, and I'm going to edit its values. I'm going to make its friction 0 and its bounciness 0 0.05. Then I'm going to drag it and drop it on all the structures. Basically, I'm just dragging it and dropping it on the obstacles and also each of the four sides. Now when you play the scene, your ball should bounce off of these structures and it should look more like a normal game. Alright, and in the script on line 16, I'm going to write raycast hit equals physics 2 draycast transform the position vector 2 up. Basically, uh, the hole is looking for if any like object is going over it. And if it does, if hit dot collider is not equal to null, then in the console, it's going to say you won. Alright, and so before you test out, quickly make sure that your hole is at the position of Z2 and not z0 this will make it so that it's below the ball in terms of layering all right thanks for watching i hope that worked for you please like share and leave a comment and let me know how this video is like for you